The ocean is full of algae, like this sweet kelp. Many are edible, and yet it still feels like a novelty to eat them. As it turns out, algae may be our future. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Stone Age Man. Today we are going to explore the world of algae. And is it something that can help us with a sustainable future? First, some algae basics. The word algae is a bit of a broad, informal term for photosynthetic eukaryotes. They can be as large as giant kelp that form underwater forest-like ecosystems. Those would be classified as macroalgae. Or they could be microscopic and small, such as the algae you'd scoop out of a pond. Those are microalgae. And some things we call algae are not algae at all, like spirulina, which is a type of cyanobacteria commonly called blue-green algae. We'll save that for another Another video. We'll be talking here mostly about macroalgae, like this sugar kelp that we're taste testing out on the boat in Sweden. Yeah, yeah. it's like miso soup. Miso soup. This is exactly yeah. what they do it. Oh, this is what miso soup is made out of this? Miso. Miso on the boat. I mean, I'm not usually a fan of miso soup, but um, not bad. It's like a potato chip that has been left in a humid environment for a, uh, for a night. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of sugar in it. it. Is, it's, it's sweet, but clearly since it has been in marine salt water, it's also salty. <laughs> <laughs> aquatic algae have been peripherally in my awareness for a while now. As a young biologist, I worked as an aquatic ecologist in ponds like this. I knew their role in the ecosystem, but I never ate them. In fact, I didn't really start eating algae until I was a little bit more adventurous and tried things like sushi. That late start into algae was in part due to my meat and potatoes Midwestern roots. Regardless of my modern use of algae, humans have been eating algae for a long time. In fact, cooked and partially eaten seaweed was recently found in the most ancient human civilization in the Americas, a 14,000 year old site on the coast of Chile. There, archaeologists actually found no fewer than nine species of seaweed and marine algae that were being used as food. So back to this cove in Sweden. What I'm interested in learning about here is how we can take advantage of age-old traditional food sources and then potentially mix them into our diets and lives in a very modern way. To help us figure out this algae thing, Jonas Stenstrom. This is my friend Jonas. And this is no ordinary rope in the ocean. It's full of algae you can eat. In fact, it will revolutionize food in the future. Much like a farm on land, this is a farm underwater. And if you've never heard of this, stay tuned, because in just a few minutes, you'll have a better understanding of where our future lies. Algae. There's a lot of stuff in this algae that to me is an unused resource. I'm not trying to say that we should use everything on the planet, but the good thing about algae is that they require no input from us. They grow fast and they have everything they need in the water. They have the sunlight and they have all the nutrients in the water. They don't need, need us to fertilize anything. We do use this resource a lot already, but now they're finding even more ways to use it, which I find is really cool. And that is why we are at this picture-perfect research station in Sweden. First, to see exactly how they harvest them, and then to see the many ways they could mix into our lives in the future. And this is why the director took us out on this little boat to a bunch of ropes in the ocean. Just a very virgin plant, you see? Next season, this one will be three meter. Ropes just like this are first seeded with different species of algae and then they're strung out in the ocean. Over the winter, they grow into a full grown algae where they can be collected in the spring. Here we can see the beautiful and edible ulva, which can be cut off and added to salads more or less just like this. It's actually about 30% protein in these green algae, which is insane. Here you have the massive sugar kelp. 100 grams of raw sugar kelp contains roughly 10 grams of carbs and 2 grams of protein. It has lots of iodine for good thyroid health. It's relatively high in iron, which helps with anemia. It also contains vanadium, a mineral known to help people with type 2 diabetes because it helps regulate blood sugar. All good things, but first we have to get it out of the water, and they do that by pulling it up with massive winches on boats like this. Once they're on the boat, they're transported to land, which is the second part of the process. We have been invited to check out the factory where they actually take the algae after they have harvested it. And now we're gonna see what they can do with it. <laughs> cool. Look at this, look at this. 
Holy moly. First, of course, when you pull it out of the water, you gotta get all of the water out of the kelp. So that's when uh, they hang it up in here, get the water out, and that's the first step in the process of then making it into a product that we can use. So of course, I understand that at this stage, they're in no way ready, but you know, we have to at least do a one taste sample. Not bad, still salty, with an algal aftertaste. Huh? <laughs> looks almost illegal. <laughs> this looks like bags of something else. There's heaters like this all over the place. The drying outside is just like a pre-dry location. This is where they do the secondary dry. Uh, and it's really hot in here. It's like a sauna and it's like a hot vent that is blowing in here just to get all of the uh, moisture out of the algae. And this is, this is where everything is. After the algae has been dried to this stage, it can be packaged up and shipped to various industries around the globe. Some products made in full or in part from algae include seaweed protein bars, a seaweed flavoring, a pesto, a beer, seaweed chips, and they also have non-edible products like bricks for construction, the handle of a toothbrush, and then this very smart animal feed. The idea with this is that it's being mixed into the animal feed that is then given to cows, cattle, and there's a reason for that. The cows and cattle produce a lot of gases. They burp and they fart, adding methane to the atmosphere. By adding algae to the animal feed, we're getting a lot less methane production. Algae could actually be the solution for that. And besides the products, we found out that farming algae does seem to help the environment. There seems to be a lot of benefits to growing things in the ocean that people might not know about or think about. And when you harvest the algae, you will take up nitrogen and phosphorus that is in the algae and you will lift it from the sea to land. So when you have a, a sea as ours that is oversaturated with nutrients, this is a really a big environmental problem here. This helps to cultivate the algae. At this stage, it is worth reflecting on a few things. How was it? Very cold. First, you're probably not going to be swimming in the ocean like Jonas and I were here and just chow down on a big hunk of algae. At least, not an old kelp like this. That's really tough. <laughs> Maybe Olva if you got a hold of it. Actually, it tastes surprisingly well. But it's fascinating to know that there are many health benefits of incorporating algae into our lives, that it could suck nutrients out of the water, and that it could be used in various ways to reduce our use of plastics and concrete. I also found it fascinating that farming algae might be a great way to take advantage of areas that aren't heavily trafficked. Yet, it is worth noting here that I am a believer in moderation. Here is a shot of algae farming currently in the East China Sea. I'm not sure why this bothers me a little bit, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Either way, as someone who didn't use algae much, it's fascinating to know that algae and algae farming is on the rise, Ooh. and it's something that we could all potentially take advantage of. Straight from the ocean. Big thanks to Jonas. Really good. For walking me around to his old stomping grounds here and showing me uh, algae, showing you guys all the new applications. I learned a lot, as I always do in these videos. A big thanks to my patrons who are helping support this nature education. Uh, remember, if you want to help support what we're doing, you can also go over to there to Patreon and pick up the new book that we wrote, Nature Is Not Trying to Kill You, which is just an extension of all the videos that we're doing as well, just showing you that you can get out in nature, you can enjoy it, and that it's it's a nice place to be in and interact with, if only you know a little bit about it. And that's what we're trying to do. Okay, we'll see you in the next one. Are there any poisonous algaes? There are poisonous algaes, but not these kinds of algaes. A lot of times it has to do with cyanobacteria, uh, what people often refer to as blue-green algae, which is different. It's actually a bacteria that produces a toxin. 